Okay. Hello, everybody. Now it's time to learn about more interesting things. Who doesn't like learning? Everybody does, especially if it's fun things. So let's go back to our talented stars and let's see what do they have to teach us today. To begin with, I would call upon Eli to share what she's going to teach. Go ahead, Eileen, please. Hi, everyone. Today, I will be teaching you a very exciting thing. On this day, Saturday the 16th, you will be learning how to calligraphy like a pro. Let's jump right into it. Haven't you always seen these beautiful letterings and wondered how, however people are managing to do such greatness? Well, today's your lucky day because I'll be teaching you how to write some beautiful calligraphy only with less effort. Let's dive into the steps to do so. The material you will need, the materials you will need as a beginner calligrapher are a, pa a plain piece of paper and a pen. Yes, you can use any pen and or any marker you want. You don't need to use calligraphy pens uh, like this one. Calligraphy pens like this one are only used in a different method. But as a bit more experienced person, I recommend using a regular pen to start with before jumping into brush pens and calligraphy pens. Okay, let's start. Step one, take your very normal pen and start writing the alphabet in it. I hope you can see it. Like this. A, B, C, D. Um, you should write the whole alphabet, but uh, I have no time. Okay, you should write in cursive. Step two, take the downward stroke in each letter and draw a line next to it. Okay, I'll teach you. This one goes upward in A. This one goes downward, right? So this one goes upward, downward. This one goes upward. This one goes downward. Upward, upward. So what you should do is you should look at the downward strokes, right? You need to like draw a line. Draw a little line right next to it and you just color it in. And we'll do that to the other downward stroke too. And there you go, you've done your first <laughs> calligraphy letter already. That is pretty easy, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, the method we used here is actually for calligraphy, which is the easiest way to make beautiful calligraphy. There is also another method um, which we will cover later. Okay, so you need to continue practicing this method over and over again until you really get the hang of it, like with the entire alphabet and stuff. And now you're ready to write a word. In you need to write. Okay, step four. You need to write a word in cursive. Uh, I'll write um hello because that's the most basic word, isn't it? There you go. You write it in cursive, and then we're gonna take this downward stroke. We're gonna draw a line next to it. Downward stroke, upward, downward, next to it. Upward, downward, a line right next to it. This goes upward and this goes downward. So, a line, a line, a line, a line. And now I'm just going to quickly fill it in. It may not be that neat because I'm doing this really quick. But um, it's better to do it neat. But actually doing it scribbly like this is also a style. As some people like to say, it's it's a different style. Yeah. See, it looks kind of weird, but I mean, <laughs> that's all I can do right now. <laughs> okay, anyway. uh, So you can use the method I taught you before, and now you have successfully created your first word in calligraphy. Well done. You might not be happy with it like right now at the moment, but over time, once you start practicing by like copying references from 
by looking at pictures from Google and Pinterest and everything, and you start like practicing calligraphy a bit more, you will have mastered English for calligraphy by then. So yeah. Now for the other method, which I was talking about. It is basically like working with pressure, like pressing lightly on the upward strokes and pressing hard on the downward strokes. This is a bit more harder and it, it needs a lot more practice. But for this method, only a calligraphy pen or a brush pen or even a highlighter would work. Like a highlighter or a calligraphy pen. But a normal pen wouldn't really work. Okay, um, I'll show you. I'm pressing lightly and I'm gonna lightly. That's how you do it. I know it looks horrible. I I haven't mastered it yet. So yeah. Before I end, let me show you a few tips and tricks. When you're writing in cursive, try to make it more loopy and more curvy. See, some people write it A like this, but it's better to go like this. Right. Okay, and then some people write G like this. But then writing G like this is way better when doing calligraphy. So yeah, try to make it more loopy and more curvy. You can even add special effects like drawing a line with another color on the right side. Or like not coloring the four calligraphy. Um, I, I'll show you what I'm talking about. For example, I wrote hello here, right? Let me just quick it in. Fill it in, not quick it in. Uh, what's wrong with my English today? See, I'm drawing a line on the right side, see? So oh, it's a cool effect. But you know what's way better? Let me show you. Let me just write hi real quick. Just, you know, color it in, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then you outline it with the black pen. See, this is when it starts looking like you're a professional credible. So, yeah. Or there's also another, like, a little trick you can do, which is just drawing the line near the downward stroke and not coloring it in at all. This is also another style of doing it. So yeah, and that's all I have for today. Any questions, anybody? Does anybody have any questions? Yes, Arudra. Yeah, uh, so one question. Uh, for the first method, um, you made holes and then you filled it, it in. I mean, what? You filled it yeah, in yeah. with the normal pen. And then for the second method, you just went light and then hard, like directly yeah. making it without the holes. Yeah, without the holes. Without the holes, yeah. So, so like, you can still make holes with the actual calligraphy pen, right? You don't have to just directly... Yeah the thing. yeah even with the mean. even with the calligraphy pen you can just use this end can you see uh, this end you don't have to use the whole thing like this thin end you can just do it like this you can just see i'm writing normally here and i can just make the holes and color it in i don't have to do that method with the calligraphy pen yeah but it's probably more professional so yes it's more professional you... yes okay okay and harder. Oh, uh, yeah. Any other any other questions or any other things? Uh, okay. So I'll just go over what I we had done today. So we learned about calligraphy and the two types of calligraphy, but the main thing we learned today is for calligraphy, which has mainly five steps. So first you write it in cursive and you make a line on the downward stroke and color it in. And you have to practice it a lot to get it truly mastered. And then, yeah, that's how you do for calligraphy. And we also learned about the other method, which uses the calligraphy pen and that it is way harder. harder. And I also taught you a few tips and tricks. 
So that's all we have covered today. Thank you for listening. Eileen signing out. Thank you, Eileen. I think I'm definitely going to try on more Pilag calligraphy. It's been really long and I really like it. Thank you for teaching us in a way that it's easy and more fun. Next, I would like to invite Riyaj. Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm going to teach you how to wash your hands. Hi, everybody. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how to properly wash your hands. But before that, if you come back after playing and eat food without washing your hands, imagine how many germs went inside your stomach and then you got sick. So, washing your hands is simple, but an important way you can take to prevent from having germs and to prevent the spread of germs and illness. By washing your hands regularly, you can keep yourself and those around you healthy. Things you need to wash your hands. Bar soap or hand wash any or any type of soap you have. Hot or cold running water, which you which type you can use hot or cold. Clean towel or air dryer. You can also use tissues. Step one. Step one. Wet your hands. The first step is to wet your hands with clean running water. You can you can, can use warm or cold water, whichever you prefer. Make sure your hands are completely wet before moving on to the next step. Up next, next step two: apply soap. Next, apply soap to your hands. You you. You can use liquid soap bar or soap or whatever type of soap you have available. It's important to use soap because it helps remove dirt, germs and, the, and other harmful substances from your hands. Three, step three, rub your hands. Now it's time to rub your hands together. Vigorously making it sure to rub the back of your hands. And, and between your fingers, under your nails, this helps ensure you're cleaning all parts of your hands truly. Scrub at least for 20 seconds. It's recommended to scrub to, 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 to scrub your hands for 20 seconds. It's, it's to make sure you're getting rid of all the germs and dirt on your hands. To help see, keep, time of the, keep track of the time, you can sing the happy birthday song twice by humming. Step 5. Wash your hands. After scrubbing your hands, wash your hands with water. Make sure you wash up all the soap from your hands. Next, take a dry towel, dry your hands. Dry your hands using a clean car towel or air dryer. Make sure it's dry and clean to avoid the making your hands dirty again. Because if it's a dirty towel, your hands will get dirty again. If you, even if you washed it. And that's it. For su successfully wash your hands and reduce the list of spreading germs and illness. Illness. Now I'll demonstrate how to do it. It So the main place you should wash your hands. Is in the bathroom because you have all substances of fluid. First, you take you take your you take your hand, make your hand fully wet, take the soap, scrub it, step three, scrub it vigorously, front to back to make it 
Team. In reason for the show. Then take a dry towel. And then rub your hands. This is how you wash your hands. They are all nice and clean. Next, conclusion. Thank you for watching this demonstration speech on how to properly wash your hands. Remember to quickly wash your hands regularly, especially before eating. After using the restroom, you can wash your hands regularly, especially restroom. And after being in contact with someone who is sick, by taking these simple steps, you can help keep yourself. You can help keep yourself and those around you healthy. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yes, Rudra, go ahead. Please ask your question. Uh, um. What do you think is better, sanitizer or soap, and why? Both are okay, but soap makes it more cleaner if you rub it and that. Because sanitizer makes the some germs go away, not all the hot germs. So like the like you're saying, ninety nine percent germs will go away, but there are still more than more nine, and so you can use. Soap and if you use soap, you can rub it all around your hand. If you use sanitizer, only on the palm on the hand and back hand it can't go. So then, soap is much better. Thanks. Even if you're going outside, I should go. Like if you can outside, if there's no soap and water, you can use sanitizer. But still, there's still little germs, but. Not that much, so yeah. But washing hands isn't much better. Like we uh, are going outside, then the rest of the washroom, you can wash your hands. So yeah. Yes, Eileen, go ahead. Any more questions? Eileen has a question. Yes, Eileen. Uh, yeah. So, um, do you have to use soap all the time? Or can you just rinse it with water and call it a day? Uh no. Then then the then no be no effect. You can then you can just play with water. Nothing will happen. We'll have no effects just by washing. The germs are still on. You need to get some chemical to fight kill to make the germs loosen off your hands and and then it will come off. So yeah, so you need to wash oh, but then, but then, what if you just like touch the dirt or something like like just soil, okay? It uh, and then you just you don't have to wash it with soap all the time. You only have to rinse it, right? No, but there might be a little bit germs, so you need to wash it. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. I have a question. <clears throat> my question is, I don't mind washing my hands. I like clean hands. But, you know, the problem is every time I use uh, soaps, you know, like especially a lot of soap, my skin tends to dry out. And then, you know, it peels off and it's really irritating. What can I do about it? You can use like, uh, like don't uh, use too much water or something. Like, like sometimes the, like if uh, you put it in the water a lot of time, it also dries. But that that's not exactly drying. But if your hand like like if you're using like uh, old soap or sh like uh, the expired soap, that can happen. If you use like good type of soap or like it's a bad brand, it's not a good brand. If it's a good, you can take good brand like Dettol or something. 
Actually, it is Dettol that dries my hands out. Then, then we can use like those, you know those, you know those, those Dove soap bars. You can use them as a hair thing because they don't make your skin bad. Dove soap bars. Okay, I will try that for sure then. They don't dry out your hands. I but I still do it with normal. Soap. Like there are also other types of soap that are good. I I don't use that. Right? I use other types of soaps, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> I don't know the. Best. I would have told you to put it in the bathroom. But... Okay. Next, let's hear what Rudra has to share today. Go on, Rudra. You have share screen option if you need. Um. Hello, everybody. Uh. Today, I will tell you how to make a tomato tortilla. One second here, I have to share my screen. Yes. So those are tomatoes. These are the ingredients you need. That's an onion. That's the green chili, that's the coriander, salt, chili flakes, rice flour, that's semolina, and that's wheat flour, and that's water. Uh, so first you crush the tomatoes and pour them into a bowl. I've done this before to not waste time. And then you add finely chopped onion and green chili. And next step is to add the finely chopped coriander leaves. Okay, then add the salt the chili flakes and add the three cups of water. I'm not gonna add all of them. <clears throat> um, now you mix well. And then you add 125 grams of rice flour. and 125 grams of semolina. You mix well again. Now you add the 125 grams of wheat flour <clears throat> and you mix again. Now uh, you turn on the gas and place a non-stick pan on it. So grease the pan with oil. And then spread the dough on the pan. After that, you spread half a tablespoon oil on top. And after five minutes, uh, scrape the tortilla and serve it on a plate. And our beautiful tortilla is ready. Yeah. 
Um, can you guys still see my screen? Hello? Yes, I can see a black screen. Oh. Isn't One it? One second. Yeah. Eileen, do you see oh. it? I yeah, just I see Rudra, you can continue, please. Wait, I can't see. Um, one second. Yeah. Um. So, anybody have any questions? Um, I have one. Yeah. Do you need to use both types of flowers, like rice flour and wheat flour? Um, since they're different, it's probably best to use both of them. I've actually never tried to use only one of them. So I do recommend using both of them to get the best flavor. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Um. Okay. I have one. Okay. What if I want to do this with cherry tomatoes? Do you think that works well? Uh, sorry? I love cherry tomatoes, you know, the small cherry ones. Uh, so can I do this with cherry tomatoes? Do you think that works well? Yeah, you could definitely experiment it. It's, at the end of the day, it's just a type of tomato you're using. So yeah. it really could be a different flavor. Are there any yeah. other options, anything else I can use other than tomatoes? If, like, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, when you visit places, like I was in Mauritius recently, so we didn't have good quality tomatoes there. So what else can I use instead? Um, Of course, if you don't want your main flavor to be like a tomato-ish type tortilla, you can definitely use other things which you prefer and that would probably have a different flavor you could try it's a new experiment thank you anybody else have any questions oh yeah Rayanch. i have a question that yeah. you can we also like when we made the tortilla the 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 the, the flat thing like the when we make the tortilla is finished, do you don't to stuff something in the between or you just eat it like that? Um so what you're talking about is a is a Uttapam in No India. no I'm I'm saying the tortilla it inside like not, not inside the bread thing. You like you open the whole the circle thing, you stuff some vegetables inside it and then close it. Like I guess that's a tortilla. Because that's the type of tortillas I've seen. So oh uh, are you talking about like a wrap? Like a burrito? Yeah, the, that that tortilla. Yeah, that um one. definitely. That would enhance the flavor by quite a bit. You could add anything like potatoes, more onion if you like, onion, um, anything. It's not like you can't add stuff in the tortilla. Anyone else have any questions? Okay. If no, then I'll move on to the summary. So just to make this tortilla, you, you'll need um tomatoes, onion, green chili, coriander leaves, salt, chili flakes, three cups of water, um, 125 grams of rice flour, 125 grams of semolina, 125 grams of wheat flour. And this should take probably around um, 10 to 15 minutes. So it's an easy, delicious thing to make. Did... 
yeah thank you for watching i mean listening to me thank you rudra next let's hear it from anika go on anika have you ever had a math test and there was division but you never learned division well you're in luck today because today i'll be teaching you how to do division so if you can see here, I got some division questions. So the way I've learned it, wait one second, I think to win the There we go. Okay. The way I learned it is when, where you draw a bracket. A bracket is like, here, let me show you. You draw like a tree, basically. You draw two of these. And the number goes like the big number goes in here. 25, for example. And then I want to divide it by five. So after you do this, you want to go, you have to learn multiplication. Because multiplication is actually going to lead you to do better in division. So once you do this, you're gonna wanna go to the, you want to go to, you wanna go, okay, how do I, you want to go into the five multiplication tables and count when the number 25 comes. So for example, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. And five is the answer. Well, not really the answer. You're just going to put it right here. After you do that, you're going to want to minus the same number. And then that equals zero, right? After that, you have this number over here. Let's see if you can see that. So, and five is the answer. So let's try another one. Two divided by eight. So you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. And then add eight in the middle. After you do that, you're Okay, I don't think you guys could hear me, so let's try this again. So, first of all, we've got flat tape right there. Then you're gonna want you you want to divide it, right? So we're gonna put two tr two C's, like drawing a tree. Then you're gonna want to put the bigger number on there which is 25. after you're going to want to put five on this side of the bracket so then you're going to want to go to the five multiplication table so five ten fifteen twenty twenty five so the answer is five. You're gonna to want to put it on this side of the bracket. Then you're just gonna to want to minus 25. 
after you minus 25, you will get zero. And then there's going to be a remaining number, which is five. So does anyone have any questions? Rudra? Actually, my question is, um, so you said five divided by 25, right? So the answer you got five um, should actually be for 25 divided by five. 